we recently had a look at scythe 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 we recently had a look at the Kaze Flex 2 120mm fan from Scythe. It was an okay fan. It certainly wasn't a bad player, but given the price, it was a bit on the, on the louder end. However, there is also a very special subversion of this fan. This is the Kaze Flex 2 120mm Slim, the 50mm edition. This fan already found its way into some other products. There are scythe coolers available that have one of those here in the front. And as this version is version 2, this is supposed to be the update. However, similarly to the regular sized Kaze Flex 2, the updates are very subtle. Slight changes here and there, with the most obvious one being that everything is now all black instead of grayish. But there are also interesting changes for both the, the regular Kaze Flex 2 and this slim one. Scythe made some adjustments on the frame, making both of them 1mm thinner. On the 25mm version, that really wasn't worth mentioning, as because of the rubber, it's more like a around one millimeter, but on here being slim is kind of important. And now we are talking about a total 15 millimeter compared to the previous 17. And you know, given what this is, it is important. The Flex 2 Slim comes in the same type of packaging as the regular one. And inside we'll find the same things. The fan itself accompanied by both mounting types, screws and rubber, a 300mm long PVM cable attached to the fan, as well as an additional 200mm long extension to save you some headache. The model that we are looking at right now is the 1800 RPM pushing up to 48 CFM at up to 1.36mm of H2O. So it's a very significant downstep from the thick one. And if you want to step it down even further, there is also a 50 1500 and 1200 rpm version available. But I'm not quite done with the slim versus thick comparison. Another very crucial change between the two, instead of the impressive 11 blades we had before, we are now looking at 9, which is still kind of impressive given the thickness. And another one, while the thick one spins to the right when looking at it from the front, the slim one spins to the left. Now this really won't change anything. It's not like one direction is inherently better or worse than the other one if the blades are identical. But Scythe uses this for some of their coolers. According to them, having one fan spinning clockwise in front of the heatsink and another one spinning counterclockwise behind the same heatsink, you have some positive effect on potential cooling power. Or reverse the front one counterclockwise, the other one clockwise, it doesn't really matter, but having the two spin in different directions has some potential benefit. I will never be able to measure that accurately, but it's interesting and to be honest, Reading it does kind of make sense, but unfortunately, yeah, un unmeasurable. However, if you are getting this as a standalone solution, be it in a single heatsink, radiator, and especially for any type of like case usage, it just doesn't concern you. Having it spin on its own shouldn't create any benefit or loss if you look at the direction. Now, before we proceed to the benchmarks, I find it very necessary to talk a bit about expectations. This is not going to be a chart topper, and it shouldn't be. Similarly to how a T30 gains a lot of performance because of its thickness, this will lose a lot of performance because of it being like a centimeter thinner than everything else. This is meant to be used in scenarios where you just don't have more space to work with. SFF cases for example. So don't expect this to show up at the top. That being said, the Scythe Kaze Flex 2 Slim performed significantly better than I expected. We first tested the Kaze Flex 2 Slim in our case fan simulator, which measures CPU temperature underneath a passive Noxia P1 in a wooden box where the two fans just recycle the air within it. And before I show you the results, when we finished the benchmarks on these, I was particularly proud of how our case simulator turned out in the end. We built this weird and ugly box to have something where we can a quickly test one fan after the other without creating any unnecessary wear on the fan or on the case and b completely ignore any static pressure. We want to have a test where we can measure the in and out of a fan and nothing else. Basically the perfect state that any PC case could achieve. No restriction, air in and out, 
And I believe we did it. Letting the Scythe Flex 2 Slim spend its max 1800 RPM allowed it to keep the CPU at 43.9 degrees C above ambient. This puts it at a solid degree behind the regular Kaze Flex, and that was absolutely expected. However, the other important comparison would be for example an Arctic P12 Slim. There we are looking at 1.4 degree C better results, which is very very impressive given the P12 Slim is spinning 300 RPM faster. But it doesn't really end here, because given its thickness, the Flex 2 Slim landed unnaturally high outperforming things like a regular Arctic P12 or any of the Noctua non-A12 fans. And the thing is, take the Fantex T30, the absolute best 120mm radiator fan I have ever seen until today, by a margin. However, there the static pressure is the most important factor and fan thickness has a huge impact on that. But if you take away the need for that static pressure, like for example inside of a case, the T30 starts falling behind other 3000 RPM quick fans. On the flip side, if you take away even more thickness and then slap it inside of a case, you won't be hurt to such a degree by the loss of static pressure because you never needed it in the first place. Of course, assuming your, your fan design or airflow design makes sense to, to push huge amounts of air. And then the Flex 2 Slim is an amazing 15mm fan when it comes to burst. But things also come at a cost. Slowly lowering the fan speed in 10% steps, we measured the noise and temperature at each step, making these noise to performance lines. And on here we can see the real cost of having slim fans. The Flex 2 Slim already started off at not the best position, but slowly lowering it made the distance to the regular Flex 2 even bigger. And if we compare it again to the regular Arctic P12, to achieve the same level of performance, the Slim needed to be slightly louder at every step. But on the bright side, it is always in front of the P12 Slim, so when it comes to Slim fans, this just wins. And now coming to radiators. We test our fans on a 10 FPI 80mm thick radiator and measure the temperature of the water above ambient. And as you might already expect, given what I just said like in the last 5 minutes, the Flex 2 Slim landed in the bottom part of the chart, right next to all the other fans that I wouldn't necessarily use on a radiator. But credit where credit is due, it is still outperforming a bunch of stuff, like Icebag Thermal's case fans, both Montex AX and RX fans, the Endorphy Stratus, so not all is lost here. It's still impressive, but not nearly as much like as case performance. The noise to performance line on RADS has a slightly weird twist. At the very top, the Flex 2 Slim managed to be at the exact same point as the Scythe Grand Tornado, which still isn't amazing. The Grand Tornado is everything but a radiator fan. As we make it spin slower and slower, the P12 Slim actually takes the lead until the very end. Interesting, but if you take a P12 Slim and a Flex 2 Slim, the Flex 2 will become more louder than the P12 when it is installed on a radiator. But to end this comparison, as expected, compared to the usual stuff like a P12 Max or a Nokia NFA12, no chance on radiators. Of course, it shouldn't have. But where does this leave us? Well, despite it losing in the noise to performance category against basically everything except for a P12 Slim, I believe Scythe did an amazing job. Of course, the Flex Slim loses against so many other fans. But it shouldn't have to win, it's a 15mm fan. But once you compare it to fans in the same category or the same division, like a P12 Slim, Scythe just kicked Arctic's ass. And the thing that still makes me wonder, in the raw case performance graph, the Flex 2 Slim was a quite good contestant, despite all the other fans being a full centimeter thicker. Sure, it might be on the louder end if you normalize them, but it still wins against a regular P12. So if you don't have more than 50 millimeters to spare, the Flex 2 Slim seems like an amazing option, or in the very least, a significantly better option than the P12 Slim. And even on reds, sure it's on the lower part, but I have seen fans advertised as we can do everything, and then they got beaten by a fan where the manufacturer forgot half of its frame. So for the use case, Scythe did an amazing job here. If you don't have more than 50mm, this is okay, this is a great option, 
And if you do have more than 50 millimeters, take another thing. <laughs> take something that has 25 millimeters. But uh, in case you don't, it's an option. And funnily enough, for some reason, it costs less than the regular Scythe Kaze Flex 2 right now and here. And oh, before I forget it, the loss of one centimeter worth of plastic kind of reflects in durability. I uh, won't say... Which one is the broken one? Yeah, this one here. I don't know if you have noticed, but uh, during the B-roll uh, filming of this fan, I uh, had it fall onto the table. That was my smartest move. Well, uh, yeah, it doesn't need a lot uh, once it falls. I guess there just isn't much to fall on, so uh, yeah. Don't make them fall. But okay, this is going to be all for Scythe and their Kaze Flex to a Slim. And at this point, a huge thank you to th and at this point, a huge thank you to Scythe for sending them over and sorry for this one. Oh, on a side note, we have a Discord server, so if you want to join, the link is down below. And we got channel membership, so if you are planning to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's one way to go. But if not, I'm also releasing the content to all members two or three weeks in advance. Except for the NDA stuff, because, you know, I, I don't want to get sued. Additionally, can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to... Thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.